good to you, we invite you to stand up with us as we sing our first song.
verse 8 says, Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. And it's so nice to look out this morning and see all of you being the work of God's hand, made especially by him, each unique and individual. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure. All of my days are held in your hand, crafted into your perfect plan. Uncaptured by your holy calling, set me apart. I know you're drawing me to yourself. Lead me, Lord, I Thank you, praise team, and welcome to each of you. Glad that you're here as we worship our Lord together on this, his Sabbath day. It's a special day to be in the house of the Lord, and I'm glad that each of you are here. And uh, I'd like to ask you to turn your attention to uh, the Connect card in your bulletin and make sure that you get your prayer request filled out. And if you're a guest, there's uh, other ways there to get connected. We turn that in in the prayer box uh, an offering box in the lobby there on the welcome table. Real quick, before we uh, have uh, Joseph up for our announcements, we're going to cover our kids' sermon quiz. 
the main graphic on screen was? Was it a sundial, a clock, or an hourglass? Number two, which of the following books was quoted today? Uh, won't just be these books quoted, but uh, which one of these three? Christ Object Lessons, Steps to Christ, or Desire of Ages. And number three, um, that one's left over from last week and shouldn't be in there. Okay, and so how many times did we say the word time? We're going to count that today. I believe Sister Donna is the lollipop lady today. And so if you keep count, kiddos, to help you follow along with the sermon. And uh, if, 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 you know, you're even a gray-headed kiddo, you can still count. But uh, I don't know. It'll be up to Sister Donna whether she gives you a lollipop. But uh, anyway, to follow along with the message, the word today is uh, time. We continue with our intentional uh, series, Life with Purpose. Joseph, come up and share with us, please. Happy Sabbath, everybody. I just uh, want to highlight on uh, two announcements. The first one is we are having a fellowship meal today hosted in the gym, and we invite all of you to attend. Uh, that includes... Uh, my second announcement, the young adults and college university students, they, we have a ministry where we are having a Bible study and various activities, and it starts, I believe, at the end of August. Uh, if you are interested, uh, please contact uh, Mary, and her, her number is in the bulletin, or her husband, Ya, can you, can you two stand up or wave your hands, or you might have your hands full of kids or myself and uh, we'll get you plugged in a um, lot of exciting things happening with the young adult ministry they even have a small leadership team and uh, we want to uh, we want to fully embrace them as part of our family here uh, I have a short worship thought um, it won't be very long I normally when I'm at work and I'm driving around. I don't really respond to text messages or phone calls. If it's important, you'll leave a text message or you'll leave a voicemail. I'll get back with you later, because a lot of times I'm very busy and I just can't. I just can't be on the phone all all day. But that's with the exception of my wife. Uh, I I respond immediately, because uh, because <laughs> I'm learning the I'm learning what my priorities are still. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, she happened to uh, send a text message. I just want to share with you. It's it's really sweet. Uh, she says, "I'm heading to Sam's. Is there anything you need?" Uh, I, I asked the ladies really quick. What do you think the response should be to that? Uh, no. <laughs> That's not exactly what I was going with, but I agree with you. I, I need backup, so if you give me backup answers, that's okay. I need all I can get. But uh, my reply was, you. <laughs> and, and then uh, she was speechless because all she could have an emo emoji uh, with uh, two little uh, blush spots on the face. And I got to thinking about that, and it's like, you know, we're not all here by accident. We're here on purpose. And the very God that brings us all together, I'm not a betting man. I've never bet in my life. I will never bet on any gambling game or anything like that. But I'm very certain that if you think about it, you think where Jesus was on the cross, and he's hanging around, and he's looking around in agony. I bet if you and I, if we each looked at him face to face, and we said, uh, what's up, Jesus? What do you need? And I, I guarantee you, from Scripture, he would say, you. And that's pretty powerful because, uh, you know, I think he was doing something pretty, pretty dynamic and universal on the cross. He was, he was paying the price. God was demonstrating his love through Jesus to us by dying on the cross. Yet, I bet if you asked him face to face, he would say, he would say you. And that's, that's pretty, pretty powerful. That makes, uh, one word makes anybody's day. But especially that, uh, in our darkest night, in our darkest hour, 
that one word, you, makes all the darkness go away. And that's just a beautiful thing, that he's brought us here together to, to experience him, to know that we're loved. Let's pray. Father God, we want to praise you and thank you for all that you have done in our lives. You know, the struggles we have faced through the week. Not only do you mind the universe and keep everything in order, you watch over us. And you take so much joy and great delight in greeting us as we, we woke up this morning, knowing that we respond to your prompting of our hearts and we are here. Maybe we're here for the first time. Maybe we don't know why we are here. But I pray that your spirit and mercy and grace, your spirit will speak to our hearts this morning. We will know that we have been at your feet. We will know that if there's anything you need in the universe, it's us. That's why you created us. Father, there are times in which we may have forgotten this. We had an opportunity to share with someone who may be thinking, what's the purpose of living? And you say, you are. I, I love you. And I, we want to praise you for that. Be with us as the pastor, Pastor Hiram gives a message that somehow, somehow you will speak to not only our, our minds, but also our hearts. And that we will, we will walk away from this place. Not with heavy hearts, but with happy, joyful hearts, knowing that we are yours and we are loved. In your name we pray. Amen. I look back on this road I've traveled I see so many times he's carried me through And if there's one thing that I've learned in this life My Redeemer is faithful and true My Redeemer is faithful and true And everything he has said he will mercies on you. My Redeemer is faithful and true. My heart rejoices when I hear the promise. There is a place that I'm preparing for you. I know someday I'll see my Lord face to face, cause my My Redeemer is faithful and true. Everything He has said He will do. And every morning His mercies are new. My Redeemer is faithful and true.
And in every situation, he's proved his love to me. When I lack the understanding, he gives more grace to me. My Redeemer is faithful and true. And everything he has said, he will do. And every morning, his mercies are new. Redeemer is faithful and true. Thank you, Vega family, once again. As always, that was a great blessing. So Joseph, I guess if you had texted her, you and some of those awesome grapes at Sam's, it just wouldn't have been the same, would it? Because that's what I want. When my wife goes to Sam's, I want grapes. But yes. Well, welcome once again. So glad each of you are here. And I'd like to invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, as we continue with our series on intentional living. Our main thought uh, in the message today is how we spend our time is how we spend our lives. And so we turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 as we cover a message today titled Time. Time, relentlessly, it keeps moving forward unstoppable untamable time it just keeps going waiting for no man and no thing time it's fleeting seconds pass us by as it counts down to eternity as the sands of time go through the hourglass, so our moments count down and then go forever into the past. Kids, this is an hourglass. You may be familiar with one. It's an ancient timekeeping device still used for some things today. I think probably the most popular thing an hourglass is used for in our world today is to keep track of how long you have in a board game before it's someone else's turn. But it's still used even in modern times. It's called an hourglass because, well, there were some of them in ancient times. They figured out with the volume of sand how to put enough sand in it that it would take an hour for all the sand to go through. The little ones in the uh, game boxes today usually, what, take about three minutes, something like that. It's still called an hourglass. But just as each grain of sand goes through the hourglass, that can represent in our minds today moments of time. Time to uh, make decisions, opportunities that are passing by. And once they're gone, they're gone forever. And so, how we spend our time is how we spend our lives. Look with me in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, if you're still looking for that. Ecclesiastes 3. And verse 1, it says, To everything there is a season, and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, and a what? 
time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. We think of uh, our lives, the passing phases of our lives, our situations, uh, our encounters, and our experiences. And there's a time for this, a time for that. As life changes, as life adapts, as we grow, as we age, the time for us to do certain things comes of age, and then with some of those things it passes. The time has passed for me to run around and play tag and skip unless I go to recess at the school one day, right? The time has passed. Look with me in verse 11 here, and it says, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, He, God, has made everything beautiful in its time, and He has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. So as time passes, He puts eternity in our hearts. We need to focus beyond just the moments we have here today to the hereafter, to the beyond. And we're going to talk briefly today that time is a gift from God. What does that mean, though, that time is a gift from God? What are the implications in our lives if time is a gift from God? How should we view the time we have? Here's another thought for you today. We're going to try to keep it concise. How valuable is time? The story is told of a wealthy man. He had built quite the financial empire throughout his life. In so doing, he had been a ruthless businessman and taken advantage of many folk. He had alienated his family, been through multiple marriages, didn't have anyone that really seemed too much to care or love him. And here he was facing his last few hours, and his money wouldn't help him. And he would have given it all for just a little more, what, time. Christ Object Lesson says the value of time is beyond computation. You can't even figure out, can't even compute how valuable time is. Wow. So, we are to make the best use of time. Look with me in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And in Ephesians, it tells us this. Ephesians chapter 5. Starting here in verse 15. In Ephesians 5 and verse 15, speaking of how we should relate to time, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Doing what with the time? The New King James, I think the Old King James as well, says redeeming the time because the days are evil. Other translations say, in more modern English, 
making the best use of your time. Making the best use of our time. Now I'm going to do a little bit of what some of you might consider to be meddling today. Oh well. Here goes. In the beginning of this series on intentional living, I, well, it was the second week when we talked about eliminating hurry. We quoted this book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. It says this, Philip Zimbardo's recent research on the demise of guys, i.e. the crisis of masculinity in Western culture, has concluded the average guy spends 10,000 hours playing video games by the age 21. Wow. 10,000 hours. Okay. To, to put that into perspective for you, a 50-week, 40-hour work week is 2,000 hours. So five years of full-time work by age 21 has been put into video games for the average guy. The author continues, My mind jumps to the research around this rule. In 10,000 hours, you could master any craft or become an expert in any field from Sumerian archaeology to Olympic water polo. You could get your bachelor's degree and your master's degree. You could memorize the New Testament in 10,000 hours. The average guy by age 21 has done something of basically zero lasting value that with the same investment of time could have memorized the New Testament. Same investment of time. Or you could beat level four of Call of Duty. That's the video game for those of you that don't know. And how we spend our time... That's our phrase, our main phrase for the sermon today, is what? How we spend our lives. It's who we become or don't become. Wow. Now, it's easy to pick on the young folk. 10,000 hours with video games. The, the reality is the average retired person has put in... Well, way, way, way many more times than that, watching television. Yes or no? Sure. Let's say they're, you know, watching an average. It's not uncommon for folks to watch 20, 30 hours of TV in America. Uh, put that into their, you know, 50, 60, 70 years. What's that adding up to? So it's easy to pick on the young folk, but there's enough meddling to include us all if, if we're willing today. TV, Netflix, social media. You will never get the time back you spend on social media seeing the small segment of how great everyone else's life is. Have we recently evaluated how we spend our own time. It may be one of the most important things you could do. Some have suggested keeping a log for a week. Where's my time actually going? I don't have time to do stuff. Well, um, maybe you do, but it's getting used up in places and you're not realizing Christ Object Lessons, Kid Sermon Quiz, Christ Object Lessons. Our time belongs to God. Every moment is His, 
and we are under the most solemn obligation to improve it to his glory. Of no talent he has given will he require a more strict account than that of our time. Whoa. So, time is counting down. Time is going by. The second that just passed is gone forever. Oh, and so is this one now too. Gone. We'll never get it back. And so it's important how we choose to spend our time. Now, balance of time is critical. You'd say, well, I just need to get busy and do a lot of stuff. It's interesting that the God who created us created us bound by time. By the way, he's not bound by time. He can uh, move the sundial backwards. He can suspend the day in Joshua's day and make the sun not go down for a, about a whole day, Scripture says. How does he do that without the universe coming apart at the seams? Well, he's the creator. He can Hezekiah was sick, he was going to die, and he asked for more time, as so many people do when they're terminally ill, and this is one of those times God granted it. In fact, he told him, you get 15 more years. He said, well, what's the sign that it's really going to happen? He said, you want the sundial to go forward 10 degrees, which would be about 40 minutes, or you want it to go backward 10 degrees? He said, it's no big deal for the sundial to go forward. I want it to go backwards. And so God moved the sundial which literally is moving the shadow that the sun is casting back 10 degrees. Go, go read about it in 2 Kings chapter 20. Okay? And so, very, very interesting story. We are limited to time. We're bound by time. And yet, the God who created us to live within time has created us with the need of sleep and rest. We need to, we, well, we spend about a third of our lives sleeping. So if you live to be 60, then you probably spent about 20 years unconscious. Okay? It's true. You know, we spend a third of our lives sleeping. So God created us that way. He doesn't, when, when we hear that our time is accountable to God, He doesn't expect us to be uh reading the Bible or witnessing or working all of the time. There are balances, though. For instance, look in Proverbs 24. Sleeping is something good. Sleeping is something we need to do. Sleeping is something I don't feel like I got enough of last night somehow. But it says here in Proverbs 24, verse 33, can, can too much sleeping be a bad thing? We kind of already know that's the case, right? Proverbs 24, verse 33. Scripture says. Proverbs 24 and verse 33. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, so shall your poverty come like a prowler and your need like an armed man. What's this talking about? It's not talking about the, the rest you need every day. It means this dude's sleeping when he should have been up working. And so why does poverty come? Well, if he didn't plant food to eat in the summer, he didn't have anything to eat in the winter. That's the context of this. Now, we think of this as well, the, the weekly cycle. Six days shalt you labor and do all of your work. Exodus chapter 20. The Ten Commandments, right? Starting there in verse 8. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it you shall not do any work. Okay. So, the God who created us to live within time and has given us a memorial in time called the Sabbath, we're accountable to Him for how we spend our time. And part of that accountability, He says, and, and by the way, you're to focus on rest and worship on this one day. 
Now, we often leave out emphasis on some of the other part of the command where it says, six days shalt thou labor. Yeah, we, we need to be doing something, do what we can. Uh, we need to be functioning, living life six days. And then we need to, to honor Sabbath. Some people go so far as to get it mixed up. It's like they take six days off, and on the one day they should take off, they're too busy. Well, let's not do that either. So, John Maxwell says this. There's no such thing as time management. How many of you have had business books and stuff for a couple of decades? Time management, time management, time management, right? Well, I mean, he, he may be arguing a moot point because it's, it's time management is actually self-management. Here's the point he makes. Think about it. The term's an oxymoron. What's an oxymoron? It's like two opposites. Like jumbo shrimp. That's an oxymoron, right? And so time cannot be managed. It cannot be controlled in any way. Everyone gets the same number of hours and minutes every day. And even though people talk about trying to find time, they need to quit looking. There isn't any extra lying around. 24 hours is the best any of us is going to get. You can't manage your time, so what can you do? Manage yourself within time. That's what you're being called to do. We think of the ministry, the life of Jesus. How did Jesus use his time? He had a focus, did he not? The focus of Jesus was to be about his, whose business? To be about his father's business. He spent time helping other people, ministering and healing and teaching about the kingdom of God. And uh, we all benefit today through the gospel message because of how Jesus chose to spend his time. And so... It's an important lesson for us today. There's nothing more for this message today except to ask you to take some time to reflect. Intentional living. How is it going with your time? Did you know that Replacing one TV show in the evening before bed, you could read your Bible all the way through in six months. How is your time being used that God has given you? I don't know what changes God might be calling you to make. But see, that's how the Lord works. I'm not supposed to know. The Lord can speak to me and my family about evaluating the use of our time. And he will speak to you. And it may be different things in different areas. See, that's how the Holy Spirit works. That's how God speaks to us and how conviction through the Holy Spirit takes place. There may be a young person here today that says, you know what? That's it, I'm done with video games. I'm going to find something else to do with my time. Or I'm going to limit it, or I'm going to... I'm not telling you what to do. I don't know, but I know that the average young man, the time he spends in video games, could learn the Bible immensely well to the honor and glory of God. You may be someone that I, I think the, the more grown up, older person version of video games is 
it, it's it, you use a controller the same way to do things and you're still staring at a screen it just it has an up and down button and a, a volume and cha TV you're, 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 it's kind of a video game it's a video and you turn it on and off and up and down with a, a remote you know to to someone before technology was invented if they saw the kid playing the video game and the retired person controlling the remote they wouldn't know you're doing anything different so the Lord may speak to you in that area there may be things that he's speaking to you not that you should cease doing per se but things that the Lord is speaking to you about the use of your time that you should start doing I don't know what those things might be I mean it might be family worship time it might be personal worship time it might be the fact that you've been living next to those neighbors for a long time and you long since should have gotten to know them and share the love of the Lord with them if that opportunity comes. I don't know. But I do know that if we're going to talk about intentional living, that we better talk about the use of our time. Because nothing is more valuable and uh, there's nothing to which we will be held more accountable for. And so how is it with you and your time? I know in Scripture we are called to make decisions. If the Lord has put something on your heart in regards to the use of your time right now, if you just ponder it today and tomorrow and go back to your busyness and distractions without making a decision, without instituting a change, the thoughts and convictions some of you might be feeling right now likely will ebb away without action being taken. And so I feel compelled today to call you to make a decision. Not for me, for you. Between you and the Lord. Scripture says, choose you this day. Today is the day of salvation. Many instances in Scripture make it clear that we're called to make a decision now. And this may be too important of an issue to risk the conviction ebbing away without you making a decision. Not on anything specific I've shared, but something the Lord is specifically impressing you with. If that's true, if that's where you're at, then as we close in prayer right now, make that decision and then tell someone about it. Make that decision between you and the Lord and then tell a loved one, a close friend, about the decision God has called you to. And then this week, begin to make changes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time we have, the time we have to spend with friends and family, the time we have for social interaction, for community with the body of believers, the time we have with children and with parents. We thank you for the time you've given us to learn of you and to learn of your word and prepare for your kingdom the time you've given us to share your love with those that don't know it, the time you've given us to work and provide for our families, the time you've given us to study and to learn and to grow uh, in our mental capabilities. And Lord, I just ask that you be with each person here with the gift of time you've given to them that you will work within our hearts to help us to honor you and the choices we make regarding time. And Lord, help us not to waste our time and thus waste our lives, but to allow you to work through us and in us because how we spend our time is how we spend our lives. And so help us to grow in you, we pray, and 
Be ready for your soon coming, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Our kid sermon quiz. The main graphic on the screen was, was it a sundial, a clock, or an hourglass? An hourglass. Good job. Two, which of the following books was quoted? Steps to Christ, excuse me, Christ Object Lessons, Steps to Christ, or Desire of Ages? Christ Object Lessons was quoted. That's right. How many times did we say the word time? Ninety-something? What was that? Ninety-four, one of them says. I don't know, but Sister Donna, wave at us, Sister Donna, so they all know where to go. All right. She's the official counter, and she's got a treat for all the kids that paid attention and counted the word in the sermon today. And so feel free to get with her. And uh, hey, no need to wait. Let's get started right there. We've had our closing prayer. You are dismissed.